Pizza is one of the biggest food businesses in the world. It's valued at $141 billion. And America alone owns one third of all of that. And half of that third is spent on Pizza Hut, Papa John's, Little Caesars. But what about the other half? This is where things get a little interesting. America's done a pretty good job of adapting this European invention into something of its very own, while still giving respect to the traditional art form. That's why today we're gonna try to find the best pizza in America. There's only one problem. There's over 80,000 pizza restaurants that exist here. So how do we narrow that down? We're using a rigorous three-step process. Step one, we asked you on my Instagram, what's the best American style of pizza and what's the best restaurant that represents that style. To make this fair, our control is pepperoni, cheese, and sauce. That's it. Step two, we're gonna take your top three pizza cities and restaurants, go to them, and rate them because I have to try them for myself. And finally, step three, the most important. The city that wins, we will go to. Find a local pizza expert to take us to all of the most influential pizza shops in that area. The highest scored pizza from our tour will be crowned the greatest pizza in America. Thousands of you voted for this, and the top three were New York City, second place Detroit style, and Chicago Deep Dish, third place. New Haven, so close, but unfortunately did not make the top three based on our vote. All that being said, we're starting off in Chicago, the land of the Italian beef, something that I love. But let's see how their pizza stands. We're at the original Luminati's in Chicago, maybe the most iconic Chicago deep dish. There are a lot of styles of pizza here, but deep dish had three times as many votes as pan pizza and two times as many as thin crust and 10 times as many as stuff. So here we are, classic famous butter crust, pepperoni and cheese, marinara, simple. I'm like suffocating right now. Ugh. That was a bite. You ever go into water and you didn't take enough of a breath and you took a panic? That's what just happened to me. Appearance wise, looks great. I like seeing the whole tomato. I like seeing the cheese. Sauce is good. Texturally, it's tough for me to get through. The crust itself, crunchy, crumbly. Not really what I want in a pizza at all. I thought the crust would be something special. This is more of like a dessert style pie with cheese in it instead of a pizza. I don't think it needs that much cheese. Then again, it does help with that unsalted crust. When I think of pizza, I think chewy crust has good structural integrity, fair sauce to cheese ratio, not a ton of cheese, not a ton of sauce, and then everything should come together as a singular crescendo. I'm biting down on a piece of food and I'm getting everything I want in one little bite. This one, like, you don't know what's gonna happen. At best, I can give this 5.5. Quick pause, because I know Chicagoans are gonna be pissed off on this take, but I have a real Chicagoan here to share his opinion. Mr. Beef himself. I am a Chicagoan. Deep dish is a garbage pizza. This is gross. It's like going to McDonald's, just being honest. With love and respect to Chicago, we're moving on. All right, Chicago, that left me wanting more, but it's not over yet. On to Detroit. We are at the original Buddy's location. If you don't know Buddy's, it's essentially the pioneer of the Detroit-style pizza. Everybody in my close circle has been hyping this place up to me for a long time, and you, the audience, picked it, so it better be good. And they've got a lot of awards in there. I've never seen that much verified flexing in one room in my entire life, but I respect it. But I respect it. We moved. We have this beautiful pizza. Without further ado, cheers. So the pepperoni's under the cheese, really weird. It doesn't really develop a nice Maillard reaction. I don't really like that. Looks wise, it looks great. The texture's really good. You got this crazy crunch and it's soft on the insides, but the flavor is super missing. I'm a little underwhelmed. You saw how good that looks? Doesn't taste as good as it looks. This pizza right here in front of me is a solid 5.8. But I will say, the hospitality here is truly unmatched. So I have a lot of respect and love for that. The pizza didn't do it for me, just being honest. I love you, Detroit, I'm sorry. Okay, last stop, New York City. We are at Joe's. This was by far the most voted for, four times as much as placement number two on the list. It's one of the main pioneers of the New York City slice culture. So if you're in Manhattan late at night, this is where the f you go. The size, the foldability, the cheese pull, the sauce, it's all what makes the New York City slice. It's really good. Super thin as it tapers down, like paper. We got the cheese, we got the pepperoni. The sauce is really nice. I love you. What's your name? Yeah. Pleasure to meet you, Sam. Of course you can. You look awesome and your food is awesome. This pizza is awesome. You heard that crunch. The dough is chewy, it's super crisp and crunchy on the outside. Here's one thing that people don't talk about. Salt level in the dough. Just about perfect. I almost want a little more salt in the dough, just a little bit. But that being said, this is damn near perfect pizza. I'm gonna give this a solid, powerful, standing seven. This pizza is the perfect bar setter, which is why New York City is the winner. That means we're gonna do our deep dive here. But with over 2,000 pizzerias, five boroughs, it's nearly impossible to eat at every single one. So to tell me all the right spots to hit, I'm handing over the reigns to the one and only person I ever would do this with, the New York City pizza expert, Scott Wiener. 
He's eaten at every noteworthy New York City pizza shop while leading his pizza tour business, Scott's Pizza Tours. And he holds the Guinness record for world's biggest pizza box collection. Shout out to Scott for doing the majority of the research for us and it's whittled it down to a concise list. This man bleeds pizza sauce. All right, Scott, how can I make this count? Well, we're just gonna cut to the chase by doing the most quintessential and influential slice shops. So these are the ones that are classic, old school, historic places and some of the new school places that are challenging convention. I know you like scars, that's gonna fit right into the pocket of what we're doing. Last time I voted scars the best, I'm curious to see if it holds up. So let's begin. But if we're gonna do this sort of an expedition, we're gonna need a tried and true steed to get this done. <laughs> Ready, hop in. This makes me feel awkward. So we're at John's Pizza. One of New York City's oldest coal oven pizza shops opened in 1929. We said pepperoni, but now we have cheese. Why cheese? Because this is New York style pizza. And I know with other styles, toppings are a big part of it. But with New York style pizza, it's all about the holy trinity, the cheese, sauce, crust. And if they're making good pizza, it's gotta come across in this format. We have new data. So moving forward, all pizzas will be cheese only. According to Scott, that is the only way to make this decision as focused and fair as possible. I'm ready, are you ready? Yeah, I see my slice. Elegant. It is elegant. It's sliced low moisture mozzarella topped with tomato sauce above the cheese. And this is a variation that a lot of coal fire places were doing back in the day because the sauce acted as a protective element that prevented the cheese from drying out in this really bone dry coal fired oven. It's a very delicate melt in your mouth dough. There's not a lot of chew in the dough in a good way. Super crisp crust. The sauce, and you kind of wish there was a little more salt in this. This is straight up California tomato. It's just an all over clean, nice to eat pizza. It's a great pizza. I'm gonna give it a solid six and a half. I want you guys to understand something. I rate aggressively. Five is good. 10 is nothing is better than what I'm eating right now ever. And one is I don't want to eat this again. We're gonna have to go back to Joe's for a cheese one and see where this lands. We're back at Joe's. This time I want the bigger slice. You earned it. You can really smell the cheese. You don't have to lean on the crutch of pepperoni. Listen, I really like pepperoni, all right? Totally different. Not as good. Oh, I think it's way better. That's why they call it opinion, folks. New Yorkers are on the go. They grab a slice of this, a pepperoni slice. You need more time to sip. It is a lot cleaner to eat without the pepperoni. I feel like the pepperoni weighs down the pizza a bit. This is really like sustaining its structural integrity. I do like that I get this mm -hmm. puff of crust at the back end. It's a 6.4. Move it on. John and Joe's are ranked neck and neck, but we're now moving on to Patsy's in Harlem, one of New York City's oldest and most iconic pizzerias ever. Old school 1930s coal oven pizzeria. Unlike John's, Patsy's sells its pizza by the slice. So this has become a New York institution. Coal is a very dry heat. And you can see that on the crust. It looks pretty crisp. And you were talking about excess flour. What's that about? What they'll do here is they'll partially stretch out doughs and then they'll leave them stacked with flour in between the dough sheets so they don't stick to each other. But that excess flour can get stuck to the dough, burn a little bit in the oven, and that's when you get burn on the bottom and you get a little bit of dustiness on the crust. It just means you might get a bitter flavor on your tongue. I want that little that. that I'm a little nervous about. That's beyond char, that's into the burn territory. I'm okay with it on this one. It does have a really nice crunch, which I enjoy. You get a traditional New York pizza flavor. This is a very ordinary pizza to me. And when I say ordinary, I don't mean bad. I would come back and eat it, but I wouldn't go out of my way for it. I think it deserves a solid standing five. Very middle of the ground. We now make our way to Luigi's, yet another pizza icon. Been open since 1973, still run by the same family that opened it. New York pizza moved on from coal fired that we had at John's and Patsy's when natural gas became the economical choice for pizzerias. So the gas fueled deck oven is what makes this style pizza possible. It's a longer bake because it's a lower temperature and that leaves for a really crisp, but even not charred crust. And I mean, look at this, it's classic New York slice. I already took a bite. This is a saucy pizza and I love it. And this is super simple crushed tomato light oregano. I like that the oregano is not in my face. I almost don't even detect it, which is exactly how I think it should be used in pizza. Salt lovers are great. Normally I like a saltier dough, but the toppings in the sauce are salty enough to balance it out. I'm picking up a little bit of pepper, which is diversifying the flavor profile. Really like that. If you're coming to New York and you have an idea in your head, imagining New York pizza, this is that pizza. I'm gonna give it a really strong 6.99. I'm leaving room. 
Cool. But I love this. It gives me everything I could possibly want. And without relying on pepperoni. I wouldn't even want pepperoni on this. This is perfect as it is. So Luigi's takes the first place spot. Well deserved, but is an old school place like this really gonna win? So we move on to see if our next pizza place will dethrone it. Brad Tafara, super famous place. Been open since 1965. If you're eating a pizza that has fresh basil on it, it's because of Tafara. A lot of the trends that are happening in New York are happening because of the influence of Tafara. So if they are standing on the shoulders of giants, this is one of those giants. Yo, what's up, man? You're trying to borrow it now? Yeah, yeah. What do you think of it? I'm about to get my review. Looks, I love it. A little flatter on the crust, which I don't love. That said, the crust is really nice. It's got a good crunch, and it's got chew. I do like the juiciness. One thing I noticed is different about this place, there's little bits of whole tomato. It's like a little pop of freshness, but it's not super, super, super remarkably different from a few of the other good ones that I've had. I'm gonna give this a solid 6.6. .6. Nice, traditional. It's not shaking me to my core. It's giving me what I want. I finished the slice, so let's move on. <laughs> What the... With Defar taking second place in the current rankings, we move on to Lucali in Brooklyn, which is actually Beyonce and Jay-Z's favorite spot. It's kind of a bridge between those old school places and the modern revisionist pizza style. Defara influence, post oven Parmigiano, post oven basil, and it's a pretty looking pie. I want this charred bit, so I'm gonna go for it. I'm glad you took that one because I wanted this one over here. More juicy. I do like the juicy pizzas. When I say juicy, it's saucy, but the cheese kind of cradles and encapsulates it. Texture, it doesn't have the chew I want. It has crunch, little chew. I don't think this tastes any different than any of the pizzas I've had today. I know that this has a lot of hype. I know a lot of people love it. I know Beyonce loves it. Shout out to Beyonce. I'm just saying that it's maybe potentially overhyped a little. This is not Scott, this is me. Look, I like the pizza. It's slightly above middle ground. It's tasty. I want more. And it feels like it doesn't have that for me. It's just a okay, good experience. So for that, it's a 6'2". We're judging this in a vacuum. We're not including the ambiance of the restaurant. We're isolating this as pizza and pizza only. Moving on. Oof, a low rank for Lucali, our last true old school inspired stop. Now it's time for day two and our first new school spot. We're at Best Pizza in Williamsburg, Brooklyn, opened in 2010, and it was really first place to kick off this artisanal approach to the New York slice. They bake the pizza in a wood fired oven. There's like oregano in this pizza. There is. Visually, it's beautiful. The crust is nice. The crunch is great. Texture is good. Cheese is pretty typical. It's the oregano that's killing it for me. It was the that's first thing you said when you smelled it. it. It's Sicilian oregano. It's bright. It's punchy. So a little of it goes a long way. Here's the thing. Every single mass manufactured pizza sauce or tomato sauce tends to have oregano and an exquisite amount of sugar in it. So because of that, the oregano reminds me of these mass manufactured sauces. Even though there's this nice floral, herbaceous oregano quality to this, it's taking me away from this pizza and trans transporting me to that. Oregano abused you when you were young. Oregano abused me. I have emotional scars from it. I like this because it's so light. It's like this gentle whisper of a pizza. The one thing that's not subtle is that oregano. If it weren't for the oregano, this would be about a seven. I think I could give it a six. We're moving on. Best Pizza is joining the bottom of the pack while we head to our next stop, which has deep Staten Island roots. Ruby Rosa is a new school place, but it pays tribute to the old school because it's the same family that's been in the pizza game in New York since the 60s. So it's got this classic old school New York vibe, but it's a thin crust pizza. Cheers. Yeah. Massive step up, in my opinion. I talk about salt a lot, but really what I'm talking about is balance. The salt, the acidity, the sweetness, just sauce alone. <laughs> Perfect. This is one of the best, if not the best thin crust pizza I've ever had in my entire life. The crust has this really deep toasted flavor, which I love. Thin crust pizza usually is one texture, which is just the cracker. This has like a plushness just oh beneath God. the surface. I wanna slap myself in the face with this. It's the perfect amount of cheese for this style of pizza. I'm gonna give this one a 7.2. It's a big Josh number. It's a big Josh number. I have nothing to say. This is awesome. Moving on. Not only did Ruby Rosa snatch first place away from Luigi's, but new school pizza takes over the lead on top of old school. We only have a few more styles left. Is this actually going to be our highest score? There's only one way to find out. On to Mama's 2, which as soon as I got there, they immediately put me to work. Frank's parents have owned a pizzeria for decades, two blocks away called Mama's. Both places coexist, making slightly different things. Mama's with the classic New York pizza, Mama's 2 with the more thought out, slightly more intentional pizza for the people. Yeah! Moving quick because it's very cold and this is going to go cold instantaneously. The one that I made is not the one that we ranked. Look at that. This is a really good slice. This one is crunchy and it melts instantly. Aside from the basil, the sauce is very mellow. It's a fresh pie. It makes you feel like that freshness of a Neapolitan pizza, but the like unctuousness of a New York pizza. I like that this pizza is more substantial. I like that there's layering to the different ingredients that are on here. That little bit of fresh Parmigiano, it adds the umami and the depth of flavor that this pizza, I feel like, makes it a little bit special. Do you think of this as being classic, traditional New York pizza? Or does this fit new wave for you? To me, this feels like classic. The only new wave element, fresh grated parm, basil, but 
to me, it just feels like a more thoughtful version of traditionality. But I really like it. I'm gonna give it a 7.35. Minutia. Oh! It was really, really good. It was supposed to be round. I f***ed it up, okay? And just like that, Mama's 2 takes first place. One after the other just keeps dethroning. Are we gonna see another first place after this? Upside Pizza is New York's rebuttal against its own dollar slice culture. There were all these pizzerias around the city that had a dollar slice, admittedly not high quality. But in 2019, some of the owners decided to open up a place that would do high quality ingredients, full sourdough crust, and that is Upside Pizza. This is very much of a style I enjoyed. There's some moisture from this cheese, you can see it. It's low moisture and fresh mozzarella. It's like its own beverage, this slice. Yeah, I love this. Texturally, it has a crispity crunch that not every puffy crust pizza has. This one's super crisp, and then you get the softness on the inside. Flavor-wise, it's less in the sour, toasty range, more in the creamy, buttery, nice French bread kind of vibe. When you say sourdough pizza, I think a lot of people think, eh, I'll stay away. This reveals the truth about sourdough, which is that it's very often not sour. And there's some umami that I'm picking up too that I really, really enjoy. This is like a roasted tomato and they roast it with like a thick layer of oil on top and then they throw in, what do you call it when you take a bunch of herbs and you wrap them? Bouquet garni. A bouquet garni. The appearance is beautiful. I'm gonna give it a seven. High praise. Moving on. Upside joins the top three as we make our drive to our next spot in Queens. You know, I, I could be dreaming about so many things. Probably not pizza. Mano's Pizza, it's a classic pizza joint run by this guy, Nick. He wants to push more water in the dough so we can get a lighter area crust. Sometimes people think like, oh, it's gonna be too bready. I but feel like I've got a handlebar to hold on to before I eat my it's pizza. 95% air. Which one do you think I'm gonna take? Oh, I know you're going for that. Yep. You like a life with some blemishes. Wait, listen to this. That's nice. Oh my God. I just bit into a piece of heaven. It was like a potato chip level crispiness mm. around into this cloud of salty, yeasty air. The salt level on this dough is so good. Not as much chew as I'm looking for. I'm not complaining though. I like it. This is definitely on the new school side because Nick treats the pizza like a bread. You don't get a crumb structure like this with big open air pockets without knowing what you're doing. This is like a perfect combination of everything. Everything I said about this pizza puts it at a solid 7.1. Mono's. Moving on. I was shocked with Mano's, but our work doesn't end here. Are we gonna see another dethroning with one of my favorite pizza stops in New York City? Let's find out. So we're at Scars, one of my personal favorites in the second most highly voted pizza shop in New York City. <laughs> Scars is a super important place. They opened in 2016. The whole idea of Scars is to do a classic quintessential New York slice and make you feel like you're in a classic quintessential New York pizzeria, but to upgrade the components. They're using some of their own house milled flour. They're using much less of a higher quality cheese and organic tomatoes in the pizza sauce. I don't know, man. I'm nervous. Extremely good. You get a little bit of the puffy crust, but you got a lot more crunch than you did at Upside. The dough's seasoned a little under what I want it to be, but the cheese is really salty, which I love. It's a whole picture, you know? You're not just eating crust. I will say, this is a tapered experience. It starts out thin, it gets a little thicker and thicker and thicker as you get towards the edge. Is that a flaw or a positive? No, it's a positive, because you get multiple experiences of texture in this, which you know how I feel about that. Flavor is perfect. Sauce, perfect. It's a little sweet, but it's not too sweet. It's a little acidic, but it's not too acidic. It's got depth the flavor, but it's not too deep. It's not like overcooked. There's a lot of umami in it. This gets a solid 7.8. I didn't know if you were gonna go that high. I really love this pie. I would eat this whole pizza and I wouldn't stop and I don't care if it hurts my body or my feelings, it's fine. What can I say? Scars has been my favorite pizza place in New York, but it's not over yet. We have one last stop to go. Will it topple? My long standing favorite pizza place in New York, or is our final spot gonna snatch the crown? Let's find out. Lindustry is owned by a guy from Tuscany who is making New York style pizza with this Italian mentality. The pizza that they're making now is the result of constant progress and constant learning. So this is really the definition of a new school place. Basil, Parmigiano, and olive oil post-baked. Great char. Yeah. Cheers. This has both of my favorite things about a pizza together. You got a crispy crunch right away, you know, almost like a cracker style. But as you chew, you're like, wait a minute, this dough's got some tensile strength. It's a little chewy in a good way. It's stick to your teeth kind of chew, which I really like. You can't have a good pizza without a good crust because you can have a bite that has less cheese or less sauce or no basil or whatever. But to me, it's the base of this pie and then they just don't screw it up. And the dough seasoned perfectly. Sauce, perfectly seasoned, perfectly balanced. The flavor, it's deep, but it's not overwhelming. It's still clean. I love the amount of cheese. This is not a goopy cheese pull slice. It doesn't need to be. You ever eat a pizza that has too much cheese and you chew and it's great and about 50% of the way through the chewing, it goes hard and rubbery. That doesn't happen with this. It disintegrates. I mean, this is a great pizza. The best pizza in America crown comes down to this. I think it's gonna get a 785. Whoa.
Only a 0.05 difference. A marginal increase means a big win for Lindustry. Look, I have a big respect for old school things. You know that I grew up and worked in old school traditional restaurants, but I'm a new school guy. I like the idea of taking the old, learning from it, and applying new to then elevate it, standing on the shoulders of giants. And I feel like Lindustry did a great job. The moral of the story here is that pizza in America deserves a seat at the culinary table. And I think, Scott, you might agree with that. 100%. So thank you, Scott, for making this possible. I would not have been able to do this without you. Your endless fountain of pizza knowledge is truly remarkable. Anywhere you are, whether it's in New York or anywhere in America, go try a local pizza spot. Have an experience. Do it for me. If not, do it for Scott. I want you to do it. Bye.